Hello YouTubers, welcome to Those White Geo Guys. I'm your host, Alessandro, and today we'll continue on the comparison and contrast of agents and dark worlds. So in this video, I'll get started talking about the history of dark worlds. The dark world archetype were first introduced in the Elemental Energy booster set, which came after the Cybernetic Revolution, which contains a very powerful card known as Cyber Dragon, which can be special summoned itself from your opponent's from the hand if your opponent controls a monster and you have no monster. So you can get an instant level 5, 2100 beater right off the bat. So, yes. So, elemental energy. Um, so, the elemental energy, according to Konami, stated that they're going to bring out Dark Worlds. So, awesome. So, Konami just got into a round table and they were. Well, okay, maybe not the round table, but you get the idea. <laughs> and they were discussing, hmm, how are we going to promote this archetype? How are we going to do it? How are, how are we going to even make. Players believe that this is a worthy archetype. And then we're like, I got an idea. How about we're just gonna create an easy way to bring out gigantic monsters that can slaughter Cyber Dragon? Awesome idea! Let's do it! And they did. And back then, they released, well, two extremely powerful monsters, which, which are considered to be the strongest monster when Elemental Energy was released, known as Gold. Warlord of the Dark World and Silva, Warlord of the Dark World, and they're like gigantic 300. I mean, no, correction, 2300 attack point beater, which can really instantaneously slaughter Cyber Dragon. And also, all you have to do is just okay, I discard either silver or gold from my hand, as long as it's not by cost, of course, and boom, special summon. Slaughter and their Dark World's true effects they will be unlocked if your opponent decide to or actually foolishly, foolishly enough to make you discard. So, yeah, of course, you might catch them off surprise, oh, catch them off, off guard, of course, in the first round, and then later on they'll be like, ha ha, no, I'm gonna get rid of that card destruction and. Where that did make you discard from my deck and just put in stuff that's not going to make you discard. So, yeah. So, unfortunately for Gold and Silva, no, even though they brought the Dark World to really incredible heights in the competition, they showed in a really bad timing. Monarchs were ruling the format extremely well and unfortunately for gold and silver monarchs have 2400 attack points and they can just oh hey gold and silver guess what boink boink boom slaughter and unfortunately for gold and silver they, they can't do anything I mean you need to have like shrink or mystic plasma zone or something to boost up your dark world monster but, and that all else fails. So Konami is like, oh, okay. Well, we need to have some love for Dark World. Okay, so, and a few months later in the Strike and Neo set, they decided, okay, we're gonna release four new cards that will go along well with the Dark World archetype. Three of them are monsters, one spell. The three monsters are. Rainbow, Overlord of the Dark World, Green, Tactician of the Dark World, Grand, well, you get the idea of what I'm talking about, and Kaki, Assassin of the Dark World. And the spell card is Dark World's Dealings. The monsters, unfortunately, are underwhelming. Green and Kaki are extremely weak, and it's just... If they don't get discarded, it's just like a little monster that can get easily run over. Rainbow is so hard to get his effect off because he requires your opponent to discard. So 
and when that happens, you can special summon him from your graveyard, and then you get the option either to destroy all your opponent's monster or all your opponent's spell and trap cards up. And of course, if your opponent knows about you're running a dark world deck, they'll be like, "Hell no! I'm not. I'm not gonna make you discard. <laughs> you must be pulling. You must be pulling my leg or something. Just to make." Make me believe I'm gonna make you discard. So fortunately, that did not work so well, and they're not getting too much support afterwards. I mean, even the awesome Phantom Darkness support we got, which the only thing we got was Dark World Grimmer, which is a terrible card, and also a trap card known as Fine, which stated to according the card holder, discard two cards. There! The end. <laughs> so I was like, oh sweet! Silver, gold, boom boom! Two 2300 beaters! Top that! So yeah. And now, the structure deck gave us power for the Dark World like none before. So I'll show you the five new cards that have been featured on. I mean, in the structure deck. So. Our first card we're going to take a look at is the new boss monster, Gratha, Dragon Lord of the Dark World. This guy is the biggest brute that Cookie and I have ever seen. Um, when this card is discarded, target one card your opponent controls and blow it up. As spell, trap, monster, boom. And then... And then we have, let's see, and, I'm oh sorry, um, if it was discarded by opponent's card effect, you can take a look at one card from their hand. If it's a monster, it gets special summoned to your side of the field. Boom! So you got lots of pluses just from him being discarded. And of course, when this card is, exists in your graveyard, you can bounce one Dark World monster that you control on your side of the field back to your hand and resurrect your Grapha back from the graveyard. So, not only his discarding abilities are awesome, but it'll be a never-ending threat. It's just, okay, boom, 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 boom. I mean, no matter how many times you kill this guy, he comes back no matter what. Next up, we have Snow, unlike the Dark World. When this card has been discarded by a card effect, you get to add one Dark World card from your deck to your hand. It can be a monster, it can be a spell, and it, it could have been a track card if there was a track card with Dark World in its name, but unfortunately, there isn't. So, pretty much, we're going to just put down to monsters and spells. And when this card has been discarded by opponent's card effect, you get to select one monster in your opponent's graveyard and special summon that monster in defense mode to your side of the field. So, yeah, awesome. And 1700 beater with zero defense, four stars. Yeah, you can't complain. Up next, we have Saruli, Guru of the Dark World. When this card has been discarded by a card effect, special summon it to your opponent's side of the field. And when this card has been special summoned by the effect of a, by a card with Dark Roland's name, you, your opponent must discard one card from their hand. And the funny thing is, okay, I'll discard this Cerule from my hand by a card effect, as long as but not by cost, of course. And boom, his vet kicks in. He is special to my opponent's side of the field. Okay, so Ruli's effect kicks in. I'm now considered the opponent now, since my opponent now controls Ruli. Okay, okay, I get to pick. Uh, how about this Grapha has been stuck in my hand? Okay, Grapha effect kicks in. Boom, and let's see that card. Oh, look, Master Hyperion. Especially on to my side of the field. What now? Lots of pluses. Sadly, Cerule 
Many people don't run Cerulean because one, you're giving your opponent a monster which they can use it for synchro summoning or whatever they, they're going to come up with. Another thing is that if you specialize in Cerulean but you don't have any good cards to discard to create big plays, that's another hint. That's a really bad downfall. Another really bad downfall is that if you get him too late, you're pretty much your dead. So, he's sadly been outshined by these two guys. So, you won't be seeing this guy in competitive play, but you'll probably see him in casual plays. Uh, I'll probably guarantee you that one. Up next, we have a field spell card known as the Gates of the Dark Room. All fiend type monsters on the field gains 300 attack and defense by removing, or correction, banish one fiend type monster from your graveyard and select one fiend type monster from your hand and discard it, draw one card. So pretty much it's a continuous engine of discarding to create more big plays for Dark World. Awesome field spell, one of the best ones I've ever seen so far. Much better than the agent's field spell, the Sanctuary in the Sky. Unfortunately, it's, well, in my book, I, it's not as good as the Dragon Ravine because Dragon Ravine is consistent and very good. But the Gates of the Dark World is, is in my book as one of the awesome field spells. So, awesome. I'll put this in along with Necker Valley and other field spell cards that I can't seem to think of right now. So, awesome field spell. That's all. That's pretty much the final statement. And finally, the trap card is Dark Scheme. Your opponent can negate this, this trap card's effect by discarding one card from their hand. Otherwise, if not, both players discard two cards from their hand and draw two cards. So this card can make big plays, so you can bring out instant gold and silver, or blow up, blow up, or crazy shenanigans, or you can use this as a bluff, just to make your opponent like, huh, you're gonna make, you want to, both of us to discard? Uh, how about I just discard one card just to, just to negate that? So, no. And that could be a good bluff there, because if you're running Dark Worlds, um, who wants? a Dark World player to discard their stuff. Definitely not the opposing side. Unless they're running Dark Worlds. That'd be kind of funny though. And sad. So, yeah. Overall, I like all the cards in the structure deck and it, it looks pretty good. So, overall, very worthy structure deck to get. I suggest buying three of them and I'll continue on with more on the agents in dark worlds in the next video segment so take care and peace